Okay. Anyway, we're here today. Last week, uh, we had a medical thing to do. So uh, I taped something and I guess it really didn't turn out. So what I'm gonna to try to do is uh, somewhat replicate what we did last Friday, okay? And the topic for last Friday before today is just you know, the basic cut with the bokeh. And that's its own world, okay? So one of the things about it is uh, that cut is infinite. I've been working on that cut for probably since about what? 1974 to now, so almost 50 years, so. And um, in terms of what it is, it's, uh, it's simple, but there's nuance to it, which uh, may not be apparent when you first do it, okay? And so, you know, the basic framework of the cut's important. Then, you know, you study the cut. You're also studying yourself and your own movement. So, we're gonna go. And we have a full body here, but a couple of things. The grip for me is a diagonal one. Here, not, not di diagonal. And the palm is a part of the grip. People talk about the little finger. The grip starts with the palm, little finger all the way up to the thumb. And then I actually position right hand, so these support, okay, so the left holds. Then I reposition the left. I want to not choke up too much or hold off the end. Just want to feel the end of the handle on the edge of my palm. And the diagonal group. Whoops. The diagonal grip simulates your hand blade. I'm like this, it's a fist. But when I hold this way, it begins a hand blade. Okay, both hands. Okay, and oh, start with a warm up. Toes together, non triangle. The hands are about a fist length apart. You don't want to choke up too much, okay? Because technically, even though this is a simulated sword, that's the sharp part. So, this right here, if you look on most bokeh, there's an obvious place where the sword part of it starts. You know, so, you don't want to choke up, and you also don't want to hold too far away. Diagonal grip, diagonal grip, palm in the grip. Okay, now here, toes together, heels together. Very straight along the center line. Let this go all the way. And this is, uh, I like to relax it, uh, keeping the grip. Run. Hitting the tailbone. Right now, I have to relax shoulders and wrists to do that, but I keep the grip. Okay. And then all the way down, ankles, and there is that closing motion. The double, double spiral thumbs in towards each other. Make sure you're raising as straight as you can. And down as far as you can. Now we're exaggerating one thing. There's a tendency to kind of close or focus before. We're exaggerating both the up 
end of that. I want the down around my ankles. All right, there's a tendency again to close too quick or conversely to never close, just kind of drop it. Okay, the first part is uh, relax. In order to tap my tailbone, I have to relax my shoulders and my wrists. And then down, follow. All the fingers were right, is right down there by the knees. And as you can do it, you start to get a little bit more rhythm flow to the motion. On the raise, again, I'm opening my, relaxing my shoulders and wrists. And boom, practicing that closing motion. Okay. So that's something that's a good warm up. Warm me up for what? Well, we're going to start with um, here. I'm raising. Careful, low ceiling, you're going to hit it. Okay. Third eye chakra. And just a little past waist level. So that cut. And that follow through at the bottom. Okay. That sort of movement, by the way, is a good throwing motion like you when it's with some sort of now. Okay. So. Now, there's a tendency to not raise enough. Make sure it's raised. And you are checking any of the flow. Again, diagonal grip, palm starts to grip, not your fingers, and a little finger. Diagonal grip. At the end of it, so you get this motion here. If I'm holding this way, it's a tensing motion, but follow through. Boom. It's letting go. There's focus in that cut, but there's not tension in that cut. Okay. And that's what you call formally cut. Now, a couple of things when we're kind of working on that. You don't want to go cut, cut, cut. In other words, though, I'm all over the place. Okay. 
Now, what tends to happen is the tendency is to be out there. If the cut is pulling my attention out, how am I cutting? Okay. So what I do is I actually position by a mirror. Boom. I don't want to go, for example, this height, this height, this height. I really want to go down. So form cut, just a little past waist level. Feet, point, base, not an exaggerated long cut step, but also kind of, I think as you get better, you can just, you know, you're good boom, you're gonna focus right there. But not a shoulder width. Easy, round, balls of feet. And what I do sometimes, I'll just look in the mirror, just make sure, boom, that cut, cut, cut. It's not all over the place. Okay. Um, if the cut's all over the place, it's a form cut. Okay. Now, if you were to have a basketball, ball, you don't want the hoop moving. Okay. <laughs> the hoop is set at 10 feet. Boom. Okay, so front cuts like that. Boom. Now, So, you know, for example, watching myself on screws like a mirror, boom. I don't want that next cut to go here or the cut along that as much as possible there. Okay. So try a couple. We'll be posting this online. So. And I recommend when you're first starting, you know, if you have one, um, and you can swing with it, use a mirror and check. You don't want the cut going all over. Boom. Muscle memory. Boom. 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 And, you know, I used to do things that count. But, now I don't. I just when I cut, I cut. But I kind of go into this space or room. The details are part of it. The consistency right? and that closing motion, not tightening. Most people they go out there and they put their weight in there, and here, boom. So, those are a couple of pointers. And again, that cut is pretty much infinite. I'm learning stuff about that cut after about 50 years of doing it. Just that cut. When am I doing it? Be surprised. Now, it looks like what we're doing is stopping the cut. But Maximum speed 
as if that cut is still going and it's can't speak. Boom. So I swim and I check. I kind of go, as I said, I sort of go to my own sort of room, okay? Check the basics. Check on the ability to replicate that cup. Okay. And that closing action is actually, you know, not stopping the cup. Okay. Okay. A feeling is that vibration. Everything is actually at maximum speed and increasing through that focus. Okay. So, take a couple of things. Bruce Lee, he talked about his theory of healing. He said most people kind of they start a movement fast and then they put their weight into it at the end. And one of the things that, that he stressed is that, you know, it's boom, the actual the strike itself. You don't start slow, but boom, maximum speed. That's that closing motion. Okay. And uh, another really good description of that closing motion uh, was actually written out by a man named Sada Haru Ho, who uh, did 868 home runs. He's not in the Hall of Fame here, but he should be. He more home runs recorded than anybody in history. He had them for the Japanese, but American All-Stars would go over and oh, would come over for a tour or something. And the Hall of Fame pictures he faced said he had no hole. You couldn't throw the ball past him. You couldn't fool him with breaking pitches or off speed. He didn't have a weakness outside, inside, up, or down. Okay. And he studied um, Aikido, I would say it was more a spiritual connection with O Sensei, his coach. Uh, was an Aikido student, one of those sensei students. And so he took Mr. O to O sensei. And they had a very long discussion about Mr. O's problems when he was first starting to play professionally. And uh, one of the things is Aikido is, is, um, has a sword, also a spear, basis in its motion. Okay. And the way that Mr. O put it, because um, at some point, they just went and decided they would take up the sword, learning how to ritually cut with the jack. Not, not, not sport, kendo, but the cutting motion. And Mr. O kind of gave one of the best descriptions of it, like, like, for example, in baseball, he would stand one leg and instead of the double spiral close, the baseball, there's this, the top hand rolls over, okay? Um, Barry Bonds said that that top hand roll over is like a boxer's jab. 
is very reflective. It actually hit with power when it was that motion. But what Mr. O said is very interesting because he was cutting, he was learning how to cut with a sword. Okay. And what he said was that most people do that on contact. They do that. And the way that Mr. O put it, he said, no. Through contact, balls go boom, then you add that. So the same thing right here. We're not hitting anything, but literally. As if there were something, not closing on contact, but extending through it. Through it. Through it. Through whatever it is. It's imaginary. And so that closing motion. For me, it's a vibration, not an impact, but a vibration. A vibration. Not the thought, but boom, through the whole body, boom, through the whole body. And that vibration starts not now, but boom, extending through and then. When you get kind of a vibration at the end of the cut, you can get into doing it out there. Okay. So those are just a couple of tips on swinging. We can also say that there's a cut that goes more out, but the um, person that did that cut uh, was Tojima Sensei. And um, I saw Robert Frazier Sensei on an Aikido symposium talk. And he was talking about Tojima Sensei. And the way he put it, Tojima Sensei's sword cuts, he said, were like O Sensei's, you know, the basic practice cut was. <laughs> okay. And then, you know, your Rimi Nage or Nikyo or just about anything. There's the cut and there's that closing action. So anyway, we, we've kind of covered that. We'll continue to cover it. Again, um, when you, uh, if you're working on this, Use a mirror. Make sure that the cut itself is not is okay. And that's why the purpose of the mirror. Okay. Now there's a several things about the rhythm of the cut. Okay. Basic cut, which is a raising and cutting. And the cut is done with um, a lot of Concentration and focus. That's why I said when you when I do the cut, I go over the basics. I almost create my own world around it. Okay. Is that healthy? Mm. It teaches focus. One thing that, that Stephen Curry said that he did a video on shooting. He said all great shooters have one thing in common. Absolute control over their fundamentals or basics. In other words, shooters don't shoot a lighter. 
but they have their check now, their form shot. Okay. And therefore, you know, this to me is a lot. Of now, here we're stressing more of a, a one, two. Now, it's always a one, two, but yes. You know, No, more advanced is you. One, two, a one, a one, a one. That includes both the up and the down. It's hard. Most people will rush the basics. Okay, it's a little bit more advanced, but at some point, you know, you try to get that in one more. It's two parts, but it's one movement, and you're not shortchanging that focus at the end, trying to do the up down. That's boom, boom, boom. Okay, it'd be like Stephen Curry, three point shot after three point shot after three point shot after. So uh, that's kind of what we tried to cover last week. And we had problems with the recording. So we're kind of redoing it. And uh, hopefully this will come out and we can post it. OK. And um, something we'll cover a little bit more. But you know, just that sense of touch. Most people kind of work going on power, but touch is a form of power. Contact, but finer contact. And so as we're kind of doing the Boken strike, you're kind of learning how to extend your key. Okay. The grip. Right there, what I'm focusing on without here is not too quick on that one. Well, conversely, too loose. There's no, no resolution at the end of it. Uh, boom, boom. Okay. There are similarities, for example, in the cut and the movements of the spear. Okay. And just last part of what we're doing. Tice the body, body changes. Feet are triangular, but the body's kind of in a closed door position, semi-open door position, now fully open door position. Now, when you're in the semi-open door position, there's a tendency to Twist the knee. Knee goes straight up. And as you go from the semi-open to the almost fully open, the knee does not twist in, continues out. Now the actual cutting motion, say this is common. Boom. Body stays square. Standard EI, you know, you're kind of going. A lot of square movement. I watched Rashibo Sensei on video, and his movements are very it's like the sword movements are based upon the Tais Sabaki body changes uh, that are more spear. Now, this cut is a sword cut, but boom. now what I want to be able to do is to do that cut, rotate the body open. So, boom, I'm off the line of an incoming. Boom. 
I want to be able to do that without hooking the cup. I'm a golfer. I'm swinging, but I'm hooking the ball. Ooh. And see, I'm off the line. That takes practice. In fact, what's happening right here is you're getting your hips into it. The body is moving off the line. Okay. And So, as I said, uh, that cut is infinite. I learn more about it every day, nuances. I think if you go to Curry, you probably still, that's his basics, but you're probably still learning about how to shoot. Okay? That's his basics. I tried to cover the position of the hands, the actual cut itself. Couple of tips on the closing motion, which is very vital. So Nikyo, for example, I don't put the power in there. Boom, boom, it's like that cup, boom. I'm doing one lately. Because it's not about the force you want. Boom. Anyway, is that this is a um, couple of the people that usually tune in on Fridays or traveling, but I wanted to redo the class that we were supposed to do last Friday. And we did it, but the recording got messed up. So I think that's gonna be it for today. Um, reminder, if this gets posted, is that there's no Sunday in-person class at Aikido Mountain. The CAA training is being held in Redwood City at Aikido West. So no Mountain View class. And I think you have to have registered to go to that. And I think the registration is closed. You can, however, tune in and watch the training via Zoom. I think you still have to register for that. Okay. So good enough for today, at least on my end. I hope uh, this gets posted and I hope uh, it kind of inspires you to start to swing. Thank you.